Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Well, this is probably why they hate him so much. This is probably why they're working so hard to get rid of him. You know, Democrats pretend as if RFK Jr. isn't a threat to them at all, but as they're saying that, at the same time, they certainly seem to treat him as a threat when they decided to exclude him from the process by canceling the debates and rigging most of the states. They tell you he isn't a threat, but they treat him as an existential threat. And of course, the question question is why. You know, some leftoids will say that Trump isn't a threat to Democrats at all, not a threat to Joe Biden's electoral prospects, because he aligns with Trump and pulls so many Trump voters. But I think they've got it wrong. Obviously, we've shown that RFK Jr. and Donald Trump don't align at all in terms of politics, at least where you would place them on the political spectrum. RFK Jr. is a far-left libertarian. Where they do actually align is in their criticisms of government, and especially in more recent day, their criticism of Democrat abuses of power. And that right there, that's what scares Democrats the most. RFK Jr. is a Democrat. He just happens to be one of the few willing to call it like he sees it and willing to call the abuses of his own party. They say this guy's a threat to Trump, but if anything, his presence in a way reinforces why Donald Trump should be reelected. Let me show you what scares the most. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So this right here, this is what has Democrat strategists, frankly, crapping their pants well the united states constitution doesn't um doesn't say that you can't get elected president if you're if you're a convicted felon i think this strategy of trying to get rid of president trump um using the courts um is a is going to backfire on the dnc and i said that at the outset i think my worries about that were are validated by the fact that he he um, he raised $200 million, most of it, in small donations within 24 hours of his conviction. I think it's going to harden the the polar, it's going to pour concrete on the polarization in this country, and uh, it's just not good for America in the long run. And there's too much in indicia that this was a political prosecution, because the prosecutor in 20. 16 rejected this case and said it was not a good case. Um, the federal prosecutors also rejected the case. The current DA ran on a promise that he would prosecute President Trump. And so it, it just, it looks bad to a lot of Americans. RFK Jr. is willing to say it. He's willing to stand up in front of an audience and essentially say, look, the Democrats, Joe Biden, those people are fascists and what they're doing is wrong and they're abusing the legal system. Joe Biden's going on and on about how the process should be trusted and nobody should be questioning the credibility of the American justice system. Don't be a dangerous conspiracy theorist. Yet here's a high profile legacy family Democrat, a Kennedy for Pete's sakes, running as an independent with quite significant support in the presidential run, basically telling everybody it's bogus, the charges are political, they're exaggerated, and he's essentially defending Donald Trump. They must be shaking in their boots. That's why they mobilize the Kennedy family at any point that they can to engage in this weird Hollywood edited style group condemnation against their own family member for Pete's sakes. My name is Joe Kennedy. I'm Carrie Kennedy. Tori Kennedy. I'm Kathleen Kennedy Townsend. Chris Kennedy. And I'm here to proudly endorse Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. RFK Jr. is their worst enemy right now. I mean, he poses an existential threat to their election hopes heading into 2024. This kind of thing ruins their entire campaign because what he's saying essentially ruins their entire campaign. They've spent years crafting this precious narrative that Donald Trump is a threat to our democracy. And when it comes time to convince the people that your narrative is true, well, it's probably just a little bit unhelpful to have somebody with the last name Kennedy running around saying stuff like this. Uh, President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. And the reason for that is President Biden is the first candidate in history, the first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech, so to censor his opponent. That no, in fact, your entire narrative about this whole threat to democracy thing is twisted, and rather, you are the threat to democracy. The person pointing the finger, Joe Biden, or rather, the person being puppeted to point the finger at the other side. This whole mumbo-jumbo about the greatest threat to the homeland. Those white MAGA supporters and their leader, Orange Corn Pop. It no longer works. Everything they've 
they've put so much work into, well, the whole thing just falls apart. You know, heading into the election, what's really going to make the difference now? Pulling independent votes and undecided voters. Can you pull the people who are on the fence over to your side? Well, both sides certainly can. There's a whole lot of time ahead of election day. But on this particular talking point, not so sure. Another thing interesting in this polling was more independents said that they worry about President Biden weakening democracy than Trump, 53 percent to 42 percent. What do you make of this? I find it shocking, honestly. I, I, I can't I can't, you know, make sense of that number. I wish I could. I wish I had some really great insight to it. But it, I, I don't know if it's an outlier or not, because the other numbers with independence and Biden are going in the right direction. So that may it be it. But also, just one thing I want to add on to what Basil said, you know, this trial's not on TV. You guys do a great job reporting what's happening. But if there aren't those images coming out of the courthouse, people feel like they know this story. We kind of we've heard about it for a long time. So it doesn't surprise me that they're not interested. I mean, you could see how shocked they were to learn that at MSNBC, that a majority of independents view Donald Trump as less of a threat to democracy than Joe Biden. From Charlottesville to January 6th, and then of course all the time in between and after. The millions of times they've uttered the words extremist, insurrectionist, threat to our democracy. After Joe Biden's divisive, hateful, blood-red backdrop speech. After all the books that have been written, like this one, White Rural Rage. Their new book, Out Tomorrow is entitled White Rural Rage, The Threat to American Democracy. And Tom, we'll start with you. Uh, why are white rural voters a threat to democracy at this point? You would think, as we pointed out, looking at Joe Biden's background and Donald Trump's, that, that the opposite would be true. I mean, we lay out the fourfold interconnected threat that white rural voters pose to the country. First of all, and we show... 30 polls and national studies to demonstrate this. So we provide the receipts in chapter six. They're the most racist, xenophobic, anti-immigrant, anti-gay geodemographic group in the country. Second, they're the most conspiracist group. QAnon support and subscribers, election denialism, denialism and scientific skepticism, Obama birtherism. Third, anti-democratic sentiments. They don't believe in an independent press, free speech. They're most likely to say the president should be able to act unilaterally without any checks from Congress or the courts or the bureaucracy. They're also the most strongly white nationalist and white Christian nationalist. And fourth, they are most likely to excuse or justify violence as an acceptable alternative to peaceful public discourse. So, Look what's written on the front page of the book, the threat to American democracy, white farmers in the rural areas. It's so stupid, it's funny, I'm laughing as I'm recording this, but all this time, all these resources, all this effort to craft this narrative, and it fell apart the moment they indicted Donald Trump. The moment Elon Musk purchased Twitter and released the Twitter files, all of these events continue to stack from the Russia hoax to the bogus impeachments, all the way to this hush money trial, more and more people are waking up. And obviously, the Democrats don't want that to continue. They don't want people to keep seeing this obvious hypocrisy that they are essentially everything they accuse Donald Trump of being. They don't want RFK on that debate stage. They don't want him present because he's essentially exposing the truth. He's not a right winger like Donald Trump splitting the right wing vote. He's a Democrat exposing Joe Biden and his cronies, the current regime, exposing them as the fascists they are. And you know what's really funny here? They could have just included RFK Jr. in the Democrat primary process. They could have hosted debates and entertained the whole process. And RFK Jr. would have likely lost. I mean, the whole thing was rigged for Joe Biden. RFK would have likely taken the L and moved on with his life. He would have retreated to the shadows. But instead, they strong-armed him. And now he's not going anywhere. It's kind of funny how things play out. I'm just curious if CNN is going to let RFK Jr. on the debate stage with Donald Trump and Joe Biden, considering some of the base stuff that this guy's saying, outside of his Looney Tune left-wing stances. Eh, probably not gonna happen. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.